I'm Grant Wayne Scott with the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce. You just saw some highlights from around our great state, Georgia. As you can see, it's a thriving, diverse, and global region. And today at FinTech South, the Atlanta stage becomes the world stage. And I'm Christina Morris from FinTech Atlanta. Each year at FinTech South, we get requests from consulates, trade groups, and FinTech associations from all around the globe about bringing a delegation here to Atlanta. We're excited that through this virtual summit, we can host these partners in Atlanta and help them bring along delegations of attendees from all over the globe. For the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to hear from our EMEA partners, the Netherlands, Israel, Malta, Nigeria, and the UK, on what makes the FinTech ecosystem so important and unique what connections have developed with our FinTech community here in Georgia, and why they're a part of FinTech South this year. And now to host the proceedings, please welcome from 11FS, Sam Mall, and from ITA Group, Ginger Schmelzer. Hi, Ginger. Good morning, Sam. How are Ready you? for this? I am. I, I did the math. I'm about 345 miles from you. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. You are a resident of Atlanta. That's and then right. I did the, yeah, and then I did the other math. We're going to cover about 24,000 miles in the next, I don't know, 25 minutes. You've been busy this morning. That, that's I've, all I've, I've done. <laughs> I've got to cut the tea. That's as far as I've gotten this morning. So, <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, that, that's very rough math, by the way. Please nobody fact check us on this. But I mean, literally, Netherlands, UK, Israel, Nigeria. Um, we, we've got the globe pretty much covered in the next couple of minutes. We're going to bounce back and forth doing these interviews and uh, actually going to let Ginger kick off with the Netherlands, if that works for you, Ginger. I would love to kick it off. Thanks for uh, passing it over to me, Sam. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Ard van der Vos, the Consul General from the Netherlands. Well, good morning, Ginger. Can good you hear morning. Me? I can hear you. How are yes. you this morning? I'm doing very well from Atlanta and not from Amsterdam. I don't know if that's unfortunate or not, but still, you know, I'm in Atlanta. As am I. Well, we can pretend that we're traveling since we can't do it for real these days, right? Well, behind me, you see an old harbor in Rotterdam. So a little bit of the net, I bring a little bit of the Netherlands to you this morning. Fantastic. I see you have the flag there as well. So we're all set. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's dive right in. We wanted to, to start off talking about the FinTech ecosystem in the Netherlands. What can you tell us about it? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Ginger, this morning. And it's great to, to share uh, everything that the Netherlands has to offer. Uh, some of you have, who, who have visited Amsterdam or the Netherlands before, you all know that we have a long-standing history, a long-standing history also in the financial sector. Actually, the Netherlands was the first country in the world really to have a stock exchange. In 1602, we already started. But obviously, we moved uh, on and we moved forward. And uh, uh, since then, the sector has grown uh, and evolved to a very innovative ecosystem. We have many large banks and insurance companies still there and uh, that call the Netherlands home. Um, I think it's about 200,000 jobs that are related in the Netherlands to the financial sector and 20,000 people are working in the fintech industry, uh, the majority in the Amsterdam area, but still. So there is a historical foundation for us to be in the fintech uh, uh, space, but there is also uh, now- There's an excellent, digital infrastructure, there is great talent, um, an innovative climate. And we also called, um, although Georgia has maybe three times as, as, as big than the Netherlands, uh, we also called like a great test bed, you know, for innovation and fintech. So uh, uh, one thing was also, I think is quite interesting to, to share with you this morning, is that the Netherlands also is well located, located in the European Union and the European Union consists of 27 countries and it is one market with 450 million people, you know, so, so mm -hmm. having a financial passport, being in Amsterdam, well located, enjoy your time in, enjoying your time in Amsterdam also can make great business for you. And if you think about fintech in the Netherlands, why 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 would we come to the Netherlands for fintech? What makes it unique and attractive for uh, a fintech company or for someone seeking a job in the space? Well, well, as I as I said already, you know, 
um, having having that, that um, 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 well, first and foremost, uh, uh, for those that have been to the Netherlands and Amsterdam, they know that it is a great place to stay. So that's one thing. But also, um, we have obviously an, a very uh, innovative uh, ecosystem, but also are, uh, from a government perspective, uh, as we're presenting the Netherlands, but also the government, we have a very warm and welcoming uh, climate and very uh, transparent regulatory system, also for fintech companies to operate. So I think that is that is very interesting. And once again, it is very well located uh, uh, within the European Union. So I think there are many advantages. And you will also find already uh, uh, over 600 companies that call the Netherlands home. So Atien, Molly, or Backstage, that's also a company here in Atlanta. Uh, uh, they all raised and were, were sort of brought um, by the ecosystem in the, in the Netherlands. That was, you just took my next question. I was going to ask you to name some oh. companies that are there. So <laughs> one step ahead of me. There you go. Well, what's the relationship between the Netherlands and Atlanta around fintech? Well, I think they are um, uh, both great hubs. So, so remember that uh, um, uh, that where the Netherlands is well located, a great gateway to the, Euro uh, to the European Union and the European continent, uh, as well as Atlanta, a gateway to the United States. So we opened our consulate actually last year. So we did that because we thought, okay, there is much more uh, for us to do here and to work together. The Netherlands is a trading nation, is successful in an innovative space, and there are uh, great opportunities also here in Atlanta. So. So building that bridge and, and strengthening those ties between Atlanta and the Netherlands, I think that's a great opportunity because they are a little bit similar in the same setup. What I was just talking about as a great gateway and a hub uh, uh, to the United States or to the European continent. So how many people have you enticed to, to leave Atlanta and head over to Amsterdam to work in FinTech, given what a great town it is? Uh, well, I think they all go in the digital space right now, uh, for now visiting. but. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't know really the numbers at this moment of time, but what we have actually done to, to move it forward, we have set up a, a digital platform right now called Orange Exchange USA, both referring to the, the oldest stock exchange and one also about orange, our favorite national color. Um, mm -hmm. And we're trying to now at least to bring Dutch companies digital to, to, uh, to uh, the Atlanta area, connect them to uh, mentors and investors, and at least show them the opportunities uh, that are there for, uh, for doing business. And that's also what we're trying to do to convince those that Atlanta-based companies to do so. We have NCR already there in the Netherlands, which is a, is a great company, uh, etc. Yeah. And if you had a wish list for what you would want to have to improve fintech in the Netherlands, particularly if something that we could do in Atlanta to help you, what would that be? Well, I think it's what is always important is uh, uh, you will be successful also when you bring the outside world to yourself, to the inside. And I think that uh, what is Atlanta and also the Netherlands uh, are, are, are both very diverse uh, countries. But I also think that you always can uh, learn from each other to bring diversity to, to, to your companies, to your countries, to, to your communities, and learn from each other uh, what inclusion actually means and what that also, how that also reflects in doing business and being successful in business. So if you ask me, I would say, um, what we can learn from each other and share uh, uh, experiences, especially about what diversity means, uh, uh, actually, uh, um, and what and how do you do operate inclusion into being a successful organization? Fantastic. Well, sign me up. I want to come to the Netherlands. That's one of my favorite cities is Amsterdam. I'm, Thank you. I'm all on board with that. Is there anything else you want to share with us about the Netherlands and and the fintech space that we haven't talked about already? Well, I think it's once again uh, we have we have great companies now uh, uh, being part of the, uh, the the fintech South conference uh, and a few uh, uh, that are there that and I still have to go through the list that I want to share with you is Deal Blocks, Big or uh, uh, White Label Payments, but there's also Gift and Gift is a great uh, a great uh, payment app that is also presenting itself now here in uh, in uh, doing fintech South. Whereas actually how you deal with uh, charities and, uh, and donations actually on a very uh, and effective way, also available for uh, religious institutions, but also uh, charity, uh, charity 
uh, organizations, etc. But uh, what I want to say is that it's great to be here in Atlanta. My team is really excited to be here since 2019, and we have a great pl platform, Orange Exchange USA, and please reach out to us uh, to join it and to, to, uh, to help us out settling down here in Atlanta. Fantastic. So Orange Exchange USA, we want to check out GIFT here at the conference. Yes, exactly. Wonderful. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. This was really informative, and I'm hoping you can attract more Atlanta folks to, to visit your country once we're allowed to leave ours <laughs> someday. Okay, Jane, it was great talking to Thanks, you. Thanks, Art. Take and care. Great conference. Thank you. All right. All right. That was great. Good to learn a bit more than the Netherlands and the FinTech happening there. I'm going to pass it over to my friend Sam, who is going to interview uh, our uh, Dr. Babatunde Obrama from Nigeria. And thank you, Ginger. Um, yeah, I am desperate to get on a plane and travel and get some real food. I'm stuck in Jacksonville, Florida. No offense to Jacksonville, Florida, but you know I can only eat at Apple Applebee's so many so many times. So uh, we'd like to introduce our next guest. We are going to actually go out to Lagos in Nigeria, Dr. Babatunde Obrima. Doctor, how are you doing today? Hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me, doctor? I'm good. There. And 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 because uh, let's see, I'm in Florida. I think if we were to look on a map, if I went directly east, I think for the most part I'd almost be in Lagos. I've been there once in my life, and easily one of the hottest fintech scenes in the world. Can you tell us a little bit about the fintech association there? Okay, so uh, the fintech space in Nigeria, I mean, okay, I work for the Fintech Association of Nigeria, and the association is basically an ecosystem uh, uh, association. So when we say fintech, it doesn't, uh, we have right now 15 different sectors of the economy in the association. So we have the incumbent banks, we have uh, the payment uh, fintechs, we have digital lending pay fintechs, we have wealth tech, we have agri tech, we have insure tech, we have um, uh, the, the, the consulting firms, the four major consulting firms are members. So you have the KPMG, the PwC, uh, EY. Um, so we, we have a wide range of uh, membership and the sector is quite huge. When, when I say huge, let, let me put it by 17, investments in the fintech sector was $52 million. In 2018, it was $105 million. And 2019, $469 million investments in the fintech ecosystem. And so let me give you some data. 40% of Nigerians are financially excluded. That's about 40 million people. So that gives you a wide uh, we have 200 million people in Nigeria, and you have 40 million that still needs to be financially inclusive. That's opportunity for business. Uh, if you take insurance, insurance penetration is just 1.69% uh, compared to 40% in banking. So insurance space is an area where there's a whole lot of space for growth. So we can only see growth uh, within the fintech ecosystems and active uh, system and what you're even beginning to have now, the incumbent banks are beginning to restructure uh, to become holding companies while they break up their banks into fintech uh, units. So I think uh, it's a space that there's a lot of activity going on. I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, um, what makes Lagos and, and Nigeria as a whole such an incredibly um, hot spot for fintech? Because I mean, when you look globally, you know, we talk a lot about Asia and then we talk a lot about Africa and what's happening on the continent. And when you look at Africa, you you just have to narrow in on on Nigeria and Lagos and the just the sheer volume of fintech companies there. What makes it such a hot spot? I think it starts with numbers. Yeah. Um, when you consider the fact that we have 200 million people, there's a need to provide convenience. I mean, and what I mean, digitization provides convenience. Be able to sit in your house and do your business transaction without having to go to a bank. I mean, some you may some twenty-five year plan. That is, you wake up in the morning, 
you go to the bank and collect a tag and then you can go back to your office and come back because of the queue to, to do transactions. So, I mean, the fintech space is hot because they're providing convenience and uh, you can go wrong once people can have, uh, you can create good customer experience. I mean, uh, I think that the, 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 the opportunities are just enormous. And, and I'm curious from your perspective, like here in the US, um, you know, we've, we've gone through several waves of fintech. So we focused a lot on payments. I'd say right now, um, banking infrastructure is like the hottest thing in the world right now in the U.S. when it comes to fintech. What are some of the hottest markets for Nigeria? Um, where, where are you focused on? Is it crypto? Um, is it wealth? I mean, what, what is really taking off there? Um, you're beginning to have... Digital assets is becoming an issue. I mean, there are a lot of transactions going on. So about two weeks ago, the Securities and Exchange Commission came up with the new regulations to uh, uh, regulate the digital assets uh, market, which is a good development. I mean, uh, that the regulators are beginning to recognize the fact that this is becoming an issue and they need to put uh, so you can remove the rogue traders and have the real uh, the real fintechs who are playing in the uh, crypto market to be actually regulated and you're sure that if you're doing a transaction, there is some regulation behind it. Yeah, and I'm curious from your opinion, Doctor, how um, how strong is the regulatory side of this and working with the the startup community in Nigeria? Because I mean that is. That is key to success. I don't care where you look at globally. You know, it's the relationship between the regulators and, and, and you know, whether it be the banks or the fintechs. So how strong is that relationship in Nigeria? That relationship is good and it's getting stronger. And I will good. explain why to you. Uh, about three weeks ago, we formed uh, a forum called the Regulator Forum. Regulator means regulators and innovators. So we can bring everybody to the table. I mean, there's, it's, uh, it's, it's a known fact that technology is ahead of regulation. So how do that by bringing everybody together, we can share ideas. And before regulations are released, you can get the feel of the innovators and operators. Uh, so we've been able to, we have that very, I mean, you'll be able, the, the SEC regulation on digital assets was initiated by the association. We had a meeting with SEC, talked about it. They started up a committee that created a FinTech roadmap for the capital market, and out of which we now have the regulations for digital assets. We now have regulations for crowdfunding, so which were never there before. So there is, we have a very good relationship, but it could be better. So what about the, I'm, I'm curious, what about the relationship then with Atlanta? Um, in, in Nigeria and with, you know, FinTech South, you know? Um, if I'm a if I'm a startup and let's say I'm focused on um, Ford Exchange or money movement or anything like that, um, are, are there opportunities then to work with companies in Nigeria? Oh, definitely. I'm sure that there 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 are opportunities to work with companies in Nigeria. They they the the, the the market is is open. We're looking for. I mean, once there's a solution, there's a market. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, and it's not only that, it's just the sheer um, um, uh, penetration of mobile, right? Of, of a consumer base that has access to, to digital applications and mobile. And it's just the, you know, the sheer growth that we've seen in market. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the latest report shows that they're about 172, 170 million Nigerians that are already uh, on the mobile platforms. I mean, when I say mobile platforms, on the telco platforms, they have mobile lines. They have so. I mean, that's a, that's huge. The yep. challenge actually is a lot of them, especially in the rural areas, they use analog phones as against smartphones. So, how do we get far, smart, cheaper smartphones for that category of uh, for those category of people? Uh, it's the next should be the next thing we should be looking at. Yep. And I thank you for raising that point. Um, I mean, I've got a, a good friend, Costa Peric, who's at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and did some work with him. And we we're talking about different parts of Africa. But that was a comment that he made was make sure you understand the local market. Right. And, and what tools they have available to them, um, what's there. And, and I think that is something we take for granted, especially in the U.S., is that everyone is using a smartphone. 
and not so true, right? As you as you go throughout the globe, um, we're seeing this shift happen. What's where's the best place for folks to learn more about the FinTech um, Association of Nigeria, and if they want to reach out to you? Okay, I mean they, they can reach out to us through our website www.fintechng.org, and uh, you can leave a message, and we'll always respond. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will flat out say, folks, pay attention to Nigeria. Um, again, if you want to look at some of the hottest fintech spots on the globe, I would put Lagos in top five. Always. You're in, you're out. It's just a fact. And you know I'm right, doctor. <laughs> He's oh, agreeing with me. Perfect, you're perfectly right. Best there you go. Invest, the best place to invest. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And now, Ginger, I'm going to throw back to you. We're going to actually go all the way out to Israel and talk with a representative from City, of all things. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. All right. So we are going to be talking to the head of external innovation and venture investing in Israel. Good morning. Good morning to you. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you, fantastic. Okay. Good morning, and are you here or are you in Israel? No, I'm in Israel. I'm uh, representing a little bit of America, but back in Israel. Fantastic, well, good afternoon then. Thank you. And I was going to introduce you, but I, I'm, I'm terrified to attempt your name. People always mangle no. mine, so can you? <laughs> no worries, it's phonetic Ornichinar. Ornichinar, see, that's what I would have said, but I, I would certainly have gotten it wrong if I had. Well, welcome, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, we would love to hear some more about what's happening in fintech in Israel. It's certainly, you know, there's always lots of technology companies you hear about out of Israel, but fintech specifically, what's, what, what do you want to share with us? So uh, I think, you know, the story of the Israeli fintech scene is actually very interesting. Um, back in 2009 and being in America, you guys know what happened then in the fintech space or in the, I'd say in the banking space in general. Um, the Israeli government decided that there was no fintech happening in Israel. It wasn't even called fintech at the time, but we weren't really involved in the tech scene here with financial uh, institutions. And so they invited large financial institutions to come to Israel because they understood that that's what was missing. We're a small country with good companies, but smaller companies, right? And if you want to create an ecosystem, you need to bring in the powers that be that understand what's required and as a result, in 2011, City and one other uh, large uh, bank came to Israel and we set up innovation labs and started uh, developing solutions for our own institutions. And we employed a lot of people, we shared a lot of information. And in 2013, I was very lucky to get a front row seat. I was invited to lead the external innovation effort for City. And my role was to engage with the ecosystem, teach them about FinTech. And I can tell you that at the time I was terrified because I went into Google, you know, master of all information to see what was going on. And in all honesty, there were four, pay, not pages in Google, right? Four uh, pieces of information that could be found about it. And rolling four. forward, that's it. I was terrified going to the interview going, I have no information. I don't even know. There's nothing, right? From. And then I told myself, if Google doesn't know, I'm probably okay. Nobody else knows either. Um, Famous That's last really word. Funny. If Google doesn't have the answer, no one does. Um, so, you know, rolling forward, we set up an accelerator at the time in Israel, and we were the first institutionalized system around the around fintech. And 2020, we have over 90 graduates who have raised over one and a half billion dollars. Uh, we've invested in uh, um, almost a dozen companies in Israel. Um, and growing, fingers crossed, for a few more deals in the near future. Um, and we, we're really seeing a, a huge growth in the space and a lot of uh, advancements going on. And if you look deep down into what's happening, you can see that it's not growing, uh, you know, in a haphazard way. That it's very focused on specific areas where the Israeli tech is already very good. So as I mentioned, right, the Israeli authority was very uh, uh, prescient in understanding what we could do, and they were basing it on, you know, information and knowledge and know-how that we had. So if you're doing cybersecurity, then obviously that's great for financial institutions. And if you're doing cybersecurity, then probably you can do fraud and risk and things like that quite easily. It's the same type of skill set. And if you're doing all of that, then you're probably a good quant. You can do capital markets and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so things grew from one to the other 
uh, and developed in a very logical way. I think today in, there are certain areas where you cannot look for a supplier without looking at the Israeli fintech scene, like fraud is a great example. You know, all the companies are there. If you're looking at SMB lending, you, you cannot avoid Israel in that space. And there's another few areas like that that I think are really uh, fortes of the country that are at a global level at this point. And of course, we have some great companies that uh, you guys have, uh, have met, I'm sure, um, that have become uh, household names that everyone knows regardless of location. So, for instance, Payoneer is uh, a mm -hmm. company used throughout the world by so many companies, right? And um, Israeli technology. So when we think of, of Israel, yeah, you're exactly right. We think of cyber, we think of fraud, we think of, of data. Are there any sectors of fintech that, that you think Israel is, is doing a lot of work in that we wouldn't think of naturally that you, that you want to kind of highlight? So uh, very ironic, but when we started out in 2013, I was working for Capital Markets. And at the time, every, time, every corner we turned around, if there was someone doing fintech, it was a consumer solution. And nobody would really think of going to consumer to Israel. But in actual fact, what happened was the people were saying, well, I went to the bank and I had to stand in line and it was really annoying to do X, you know, uh, cash a check, whatever it may have been. And so they were starting to develop solutions based on their actual experiences and pains and aches. So I think there's quite a few interesting solutions in that space, in the space of uh, contactless payments and uh, mm -hmm. retail uh, that are super interesting, uh, you know, and I think in view of what's happening in the world right now with COVID, contactless payments are certainly... Uh, a hot space to look at. Absolutely, anything anything touchless is a, is a big deal right now. Absolutely. So, what is the relationship between Israel and Atlanta? How do you how do you guys work with us over here? So, I think you know, you cannot avoid the way you cannot avoid city, Israel. Sorry, in certain areas, you cannot avoid Atlanta. In other areas, it's a very clear, uh, you know, hub for financial services and payments in uh, in the U.S. And if you look at what's happening, you can see that many star Israeli startups have gone on and moved over to uh, to Atlanta. We've had an acquisition already with Reach Alex being acquired by an Atlanta-based uh, uh, mm -hmm. institution. Um, we're actually, uh, and I'm going to shamelessly plug in one of my portfolio companies, but uh, BioCatch is working with uh, uh, the one of the banks in Atlanta. So there, I think there's an understanding of the potential and of uh, where we ought to be. And I think particularly in payments in the retail space, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and there's a lot of engagement between the two countries as it stands. And I'll say that on the city side, we also recognize the uh, big advantage of Atlanta. And so my colleagues in the con commercial bank have opened up uh, uh, offices in Atlanta specifically to work with the digital natives and the fintech space because we understand the importance of the location and so we work very closely, and that's, I think, the advantage of large financial institutions that are on a global scale, that we can connect between the different ecosystems and make sure that everyone can work together. So we're very, very bullish on Atlanta. Well, we, we'd love to hear that. It's, uh, it's always good to hear there's more fintech coming here. Uh, do you find that there are particular partners in Atlanta that have been, have been helpful? I know, you know, the, the, the Metro Chamber, for instance. Are there others that you've found you've been working with closely? So unfortunately, I cannot answer this because my colleagues in Atlanta are the ones that are in touch with the local scene. Um, Absolutely but, fair. Uh, but I'm sure they're very happy and they were very happy for us to continue cooperating. Uh, and anything else you want to share about the Israeli market that we have not touched on? So I just want to uh, offer for all of you to come visit. And if you cannot visit physically, then we're more than happy to host you guys virtually. Just tell us what areas you're interested in, how we can help, and we'd be delighted to showcase the local fintech ecosystem and see how we can help. Fantastic. Orni, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good rest of the day. All right. I'm going to pass it back over to my friend Sam to talk to Malta. All right. Thanks, Ginger. Um, you know, I have traveled all over the world um, in my life. I have never been to Malta. So we need to work on that. <laughs> once once we get these US passports up and going again, I seriously need to get to Malta. So the yeah, next yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd love to get there. Our next guest is Kurt Perugia. He's a chief executive officer at Malta Enterprise. How are you, sir? So first of all, thank you for having us. Unfortunately, it's not Kurt Farouja. Our CEO had not cannot be with us due to ah. last minute unforeseen circumstances. I am Anthony, part of the investment promotion team at Malta Enterprise and 
hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your questions on his behalf. Uh, and first of all, thank you for, for having us in this very important event today. Not a problem. And, and Anthony, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating, like I said, because I have been, I think, every country around you <laughs> at one point or another, but never to Malta of all things. And I love the fact that we have you included as part of this session because I did a lot of reading about Malta and what's going on from a fintech perspective. Can you talk a little bit about Malta Enterprise and what you all focus on? So first of all, uh, a, a brief introduction to Malta. Malta is one of the 27 EU member states. We are here today, you are connected live with the center of the Mediterranean. We are exactly in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Malta is a country of uh, 500,000 people. Our uh, currency is the euro, being members of the EU. And also, um, we have two languages, which are our official languages, our mother tongue, Maltese, and also English, which is also the business language. When it comes to Malta Enterprise and who we are and what we do, Malta Enterprise is the country's uh, the economic and social development corporation. We are an IPA, an investment promotion agency, and our job is to help Maltese companies to grow, but also to attract FDI. And also in a general introduction, uh, when it comes to the role of Malta and Malta Enterprise, experts obviously also play a very important role in helping our economy grow. Um, just also to refresh and update uh, your, your participants. Malta has been one of the strongest uh, growing EU jurisdictions when it comes also to GDP growth, uh, hovering around the 5% over the last 10 years. And therefore, uh, there is something very interesting, very important happening in our economy and opportunities like today give us the opportunity to um, showcase that and to also refresh impressions and, and update on what's happening in Malta. Yeah, and one thing I always found fascinating about Malta is just the geography itself, where you sit, because, you know, really, as I think about a gateway, I'm a, my history geek part of me is going to come out now. But, you know, you're positioning, um, you know, your access to North Africa and the African market to the, the eastern part of, of Europe. Right. But also, you know, close to the Western part of Europe. So when it comes to, you know, I would think different solutions that you have and different companies that you have in Malta, you're able to service so many disparate markets. That has to be a distinct advantage. Indeed, we are uh, the crossroads of a number of yep. continents. We have Europe, North Africa, Middle East, and we are a stepping stone. We also can experience the reality of testing in Malta and then proofing in Malta, but also and in, in areas which are close to Malta, in markets which are larger than Malta. So if we had to go a step back and think about how fintech and technology developed in Malta, we would say that uh, it all started around the 80s and 90s, where Malta started to collaborate also with tech giants from the US in order to bring in systems, software that enabled the growth of our human capital, um, our human resources, and then um, also what was happening in the wider economy with financial services being regulated through Malta. So we have a plethora of financial services being offered uh, in Malta through the financial services authorities and also a number of practitioners here in Malta when it comes to reinsurance, finance, uh, banking, uh, insurance, um, family uh, offices, family planning, and all the relevant um, the, or the relative activity that you would expect from a major financial hub, which is Malta. Teaming that up with what was happening in technology. So Malta was attracting also uh, telco companies testing in Malta. And uh, for uh, moving forward from that, what was happening with the indigenous companies here in Malta that were advancing in their software as a service proposition, in uh, data hosting services and all this bubbling together of activity that was cemented with the advance of even iGaming in Malta that brought to the country um, a, a relevant amount of human capital from the continent that continued to sophisticate what we had here on the ground as per offering on the technology front. 
there were companies that were venturing obviously then as well in payment solutions and what was really closer to fintech and then um in 2017 Malta also ventured to start crystallizing its offering when it comes to distributed ledger technology um, in relation to blockchain but particularly on technology which is not only pertaining to virtual currencies but the underpinning technology um, of blockchain which is DLT. There um, the parliament um, passed three pieces of legislation that gave a legal certainty to operators in Malta and also created uh, a digital innovation agency that now acts uh, a regulator as well. But touching on your initial question about Malta's location, um, we are we are working very closely also with um, with players, with countries and, and companies in Africa as well, because we believe that there is a promise of collaboration with company with countries like Ghana. We're looking at startups. Uh, accelerators from Israel, for example, as well. We're working with universities in uh, in Italy, like Salerno. Therefore, our proposition, our uh, we are sophisticating our proposition when it comes to offering a hub for the fintech industry with players already be, be here on the ground, but also showcasing that Malta can uh, act uh, as an incubator for startups, including those in fintech. Yeah, it was actually one of the things I read this morning, um, and I'm glad you touched on it, was uh, the regulatory framework that Malta in, put around DLT, ICOs, you know, when it comes to to crypto and assets. Um, actually, you know, a, a, as a um, regulatory environment ahead of a lot of other places, he hello US, I'll wave at us, um, where we can actually look at Malta and and there are lessons we can learn. From that, I think that's such a an, an excellent move that that was made because the relationship between these startups and the regulators is everything. It really is. It's what helps drive the innovation. So I'm glad that you touched on that. Incredibly important point. So basically, what we've done is 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 listen rather than impose <laughs> oneself on the system, learn from the system, that. and understand uh, what was being proposed. Obviously. Not everything was being done properly, not everything uh, still will be done uh, according to parameters that we are comfortable and confident with. But therefore, instead of shying away, we looked at um, putting in a system of certification, of regulation that gives, first of all, protects the jurisdiction as, as, as Malta. Uh, obviously, we want to protect our own jurisdiction and the association with with positive, good companies, and I think we'll touch upon that later, but also offering the opportunity for uh, startups that had good intentions to start off in this area of technology, this branch of technology, to offer them a level of certification. And now, um, more aptly, when it comes to startups, the MDIA has also taught, uh, the, when I say the MDIA, is the the Malta Digital Innovation Agency, which was created out of out of those three acts, which I referred to before. So this agency, which is a regulator, is now giving the opportunity for startups to be um, to operate within a sandbox that would uh, entail that the, the the targets that they need to reach as per their technology are staggered. So there is a phasing approach, and also the the funds that they would need to disperse as per licensing, as per regulation, would also not be prohibitive from the start. Obviously, Malta needed to put up a level of, uh, so the fees that one pays to start off, some would have said that potentially they are prohibitive. And therefore, now there is a reaction to it. From a country point of view, we always uh, feel that we can adapt to also feedback from, from third parties and where we, realize that our proposition can be improved we do not shy away from trying to improve that proposition always however safeguarding our jurisdiction and um, the st our standing as a country amongst our uh, amongst our our cohort around the world and also in, in the region so that was something that we done we have done intentionally yes being avant-gardist being amongst the first to regulate but then not shying away from 
fixing elements which weren't working and making the, the systems that were created more future-proof and more, uh, more productive for us and for the ecosystem on the ground. Yeah. Well, well Anthony, uh, you did an incredibly excellent job for stepping in for your CEO. These eight minutes fly by, folks. Uh, flat out read about Malta. The number of fintech companies are there, the, the, the steps that y'all have taken. Uh, it's fascinating to read about. Thank you for taking the time with us. And now, Ginger, uh, I think we're going to shoot over to the UK, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. You are correct, Sam. There we're going to go. finish up our EMEA World Tour with EMEA Tour with uh, the UK. We're going to talk to Andrew Stanton, the, our Majesty General Counsel. Good morning, Ginger. Pleasure to be here. Good morning, Andrew. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. We're looking forward to finishing up our uh, our whirlwind tour with uh, with the UK. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's last but not least or saving the best for last, but I've certainly learned a lot about uh, the competition that's out there in the course of the morning. Well, fantastic. I'm 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 going to go with with uh, the best for last. We'll try that and see how it works out. Let's see. Um, so, talk to us a bit about what's going on in fintech in the UK. Well, thanks, Ginger. Obviously. In my opinion, the United Kingdom is the global fintech hub. I mean, others have shared some of their factoids, but let me continue in that vein. So 2,183 fintech companies headquartered in the United Kingdom, which is more than New York and San Francisco. Already in 2020, 3.5 billion of venture capital has been raised by fintechs in London, which is more than New York, Berlin and Paris combined. We've got more than 75,000 people working in fintech in the UK, and we're looking to grow that to 100,000 by 2030. I think as others have commented, the regulatory framework and regulatory authority is very important. I think someone's already ringing the bell to tell me I should stop talking, <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll continue on. So we, we've got a, an Innovate project, which is about uh, enabling startups and corporate innovation units to test products in our regulatory sandbox. The customer experience is very important as well. Seven out of 10 people in the United Kingdom are active customers and use FinTech services. So we, through all of these things combined, think that we are setting the global standard on application of technology and innovation. And in some respects in the United Kingdom, not just in London, there's been a perfect storm uh, the growing technology demand allied to right touch regulation and customer empowerment. But our focus is on the future. We've seen through things like Brexit that we need to adapt to changes. We've seen through COVID that people are much more seeking fintech and digital solutions. So the United Kingdom, as my two former European Union colleagues have said, has left the European Union. So we are adapting to the future and will continue to offer that premier experience in fintech. So you mentioned Brexit. So can you tell us kind of how the environment there is? Has anything kind of changed from your perspective in London, given the, the change yeah. there? No, I mean, uh, we left the European Union on the 31st of January. We are currently negotiating with the European Union a comprehensive free trade agreement, which will cover issues such as treatment of financial services, passporting requirements. Those negotiations are live. They're ongoing. Mm -hmm. Next week comes to a key point in that. We're seeing that the fintech sector particularly is looking at this as a global play. You know, the European Union uh, exit has happened, but they right. see opportunities, you know, and we've already touched on people from Nigeria, people from mm -hmm. Israel, people from the Middle East, all look in London as the sort of driving force behind the fintech sector. So as, a, as I said earlier, with that amount of capital that can be raised in London, the connections are there. And I think that the fintech sector in the United Kingdom is booming. But it's also pioneering in business-friendly frameworks, uh, you know, from the latest innovations in the insurance sector to uh, crypto assets, the availability of open banking. Again, we're leading the way there. AI use. But I think it's that, that sense of talent aligned to financing and architecture which makes a powerful uh, combination. So despite Brexit, despite COVID, we still see formidable capital raising possibilities. 
and we're still attractive to in terms of tax incentives, in terms of support to the tech system. But I think you're right, you know, the UK and London has been, I would say, the financial sector for the last two decades. Our challenge is to ensure that that remains the financial centre across the globe for the next two decades and beyond. And we know that there's competition. But just a pop quiz question to you, Ginger. Do you know what the second largest financial uh, centre in, Europe, in, in Europe is based? I do not. Well, it's Edinburgh in Scotland, just, uh, well, far behind London, but bigger than Paris, Frankfurt and Amsterdam. As I said, it's, uh, it's quite a competitive thing. So that reflects our, our, our sense of regulatory approach. It affects our sense of uh, expertise in this area. Well, thank you. I've definitely learned a lot of new things this morning, including the, one of my, my second favorite city after London is uh, such a fantastic wow. hub. Um, so talk to us about how you are uh, working with us here in Atlanta. Well, first of all, we're working very closely with the U.S. government at uh, a federal level. Uh, we recently launched what we call the Financial Innovation Partnership, which mm -hmm. is about creating a ready-made platform uh, to, to build bilaterally on innovation. And as well as negotiating with the European Union, we're in the midst of negotiations with the United States on a free trade agreement. We now have the competence, as we've left the European Union, to do bilateral deals. Mm -hmm. Financial services and fintech is one of the areas where we see there's real opportunity for cross-border regulatory cooperation and also supervisory cooperation in that space. So our negotiators uh, are about to enter the fifth round of negotiations next week. And financial services and digital services are two areas that we really uh, are very strong on. And then my day job is obviously encouraging British companies to think southeast, but also encouraging US investors to look at the United Kingdom and mm -hmm. understand that there is much more than the southeast of the United Kingdom, that cities like Manchester, cities like Liverpool, cities like Edinburgh are all active in the fintech and financial services space. And that gets a lot of take up. There's a lot of similarities. If you're looking at the connections between London and Atlanta, others have commented on the size and scale and connectivity of the payments industry. So we've had uh, companies like Feature Space, WorldPay and True Rating come and establish here. Companies mm -hmm. from Atlanta have gone to the United Kingdom, such as Cardlytics, Salesloft and many, many others. And we're seeing this vibrancy continue. We're also putting quite a lot of support. The Chancellor of the Exchequer spoke at a conference run by the P20 initiative, which is Payments 20 last week, where mm -hmm. he talked about uh, some of the lessons of COVID, some of the lessons of that need to consider financial inclusion, financial mobility, social mobility, and the companies in the Atlanta ecosystem are the ones who are considering those same challenges in the US. So again, similarity of purpose, common goals, common relations that we can build in the success. And we also have great partners here, you know, the FinTech South organizations and a big uh, shout out to Andrew Morris, who's been the brains behind all this. But the two people who introduced our session uh, uh, were Grant Wainscott and uh, Christina Morris, who we mm -hmm. work very closely with because the Metro Atlanta Chamber, in my opinion, is probably the most professional I've come across in the seven different countries I've worked in. So you've got great ambassadors and promoters for Atlanta. So I think you're in a good space. I think we're in a good space. And I think we just have to work out how much more we can do virtually at this time. So we're ready for a relaunch. Yeah, which hopefully happens sooner rather than later, right? We're all ready to get back to, to going on things. So if, if, uh, if anyone who's listening wants to learn more about uh, FinTech in the UK and what they can do here in the Southeast, is there any place that they can go to look? Do you have a website or a, a, a Location I, for more information. I have a, I have a team uh, from our Department of International Trade who has a, an open booth. I think it's called at the moment during FinTech South, which will be staffed throughout the whole uh, experience by people from our financial and professional services uh, team. Also, a shout out to London and Partners, who I think on the twenty first of October are doing a, a seminar for US fintechs looking to. Uh, be involved in London, and I'm sure they'll see, they'll share those details with their conference per 
participants. So we have a lot going on. And again, that regional dimension, there are so many good fits for companies like based in Atlanta, in places like Manchester, Liverpool. We have what we call the Northern Powerhouse. And also the Scottish government, you might have picked up that uh, my accent is not from Edinburgh, it's from Glasgow. But Scotland's thriving in this sense as well. So uh, really a lot happening. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I'd be delighted. And I think, Ginger, it's time for you to sound your uh, front door bell again to tell me that my time's up. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time, Andrew. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Ginger. Um, look forward to meeting you. Uh, at some point in the future. I, I do as well. I'll, I'll look forward to meeting you at TVP. All right. So I think we have finished up our EMEA tour. And Sam, I realize I, your company is headquartered in London and I stole your country. Yeah, you know, it's all right. It's my adopted country and oh, I, I miss it terribly. Right? Yeah, you know, I just, I can't <laughs> wait to uh, leave Florida. I'll just come to Georgia. Well, there's, this there's, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a small improvement over George, over Florida. <laughs> Um, Amen. You, you, this, this whole morning has given me a travel bug again, right? All the travel oh. that I did in the before times, and now we've visited five countries, three of which I'd never been to. And so it's, you know, I'm adding to my wish list for the after times, whenever that may be. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready right now. Aren't we all? <laughs> hey, amen. Well, this has been fun. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, I hope everyone else did. Nice little tour of EMEA and uh, thanks for doing the time, Ginger. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks to you as well. See ya.